Lesson 4.4. Find rational zeros of polynomial functions. All right, we have a theorem. Today we get the remainder theorem, which says if a polynomial is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is the value f of k. So in other words, if you want to find um, the value of f of 2, let's say, we could do synthetic division with x minus 2. The remainder would be our value. You think, well, that sounds like it's really long. Actually, with synthetic division, it's really short. To use the remainder theorem to evaluate a polynomial, you're going to use synthetic division to divide by x minus k, and the remainder is f of k. It's quick, easy to do, usually by hand. So let's use the remainder theorem to evaluate this function at x equals 2. All right, so we'll, we divide by x minus 2, so I'm going to put 2 in our box. And then the coefficients are 3x to the fourth, negative 5x cubed, 0x squared, 1x, and negative 14. Bring down the 3 and multiply. 2 times 3, 6. And then we add. We multiply. 2 times 1. We add. Multiply. 2 times 2. We add. Multiply. 2 times 5. And then we add. The remainder is negative 4, therefore f of 2 is negative 4. And you could double check that by plugging in a 2 in your calculator. 3 times 2 to the 4th minus 5 times 2 cubed plus 2 minus 14. Let's see, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 cubed is 8. 3 times 16 is 48, 5 times 8 is 40, 48 minus 40 is 8, plus 2 is 10, minus 14 is negative 4. Look at that, you get the same answer, only it's much easier doing the synthetic division. We also get the factor theorem, which is kind of just the definition of a factor. It says k is a 0 of f of x if and only if f minus k is a factor of f of x. So we're saying if the remainder is 0, then it's a factor. And k is a 0. What's a 0? A 0 is the value of x that makes your function equal 0. So k is a 0, or makes it equal 0 if the remainder is 0. All right, so use that to solve a polynomial equation. So if you're given one factor, use synthetic division to divide by that factor. And you confirm the remainder is 0. If the quotient is not a quadratic, you repeat steps 1 and 2 with another factor using the quotient as the polynomial. So remember I called these the depressed polynomial. So you're going to use the depressed polynomial for the second time around and the third time around. You always, it'll be smaller and smaller and smaller as you get rid of factors. Eventually your quotient will be quadratic or the depressed polynomial will be quadratic, which you can factor. And then to get the zeros, you set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. All right, we're going to show that x minus 2 is a factor of this function, and then find the remaining factors. So first thing, let's do synthetic division. So we'll put the 2 in our box, and then have our coefficients. It's 1x cubed, 7x squared, 2x, and minus 40. Bring down the 1 and multiply. Add, multiply, 2 times 9. Add is 20. Multiply, 2 times 20 is 40. 
add, look at that, we got a zero. Hey, it was a factor. Now we have our depressed polynomial. It was x cubed, we divided by x, so now it's x squared plus 9x plus 20. Which we could maybe factor. It is quadratic. If it was not quadratic, we'd use that depressed polynomial, that result, with our next factor to keep making it down until it is quadratic. Uh, see, to get 20 might be 4 times 5, which in fact adds up to make 9. So, completely factored, it's x minus 2, which they gave us, up here, and then the f x plus 4 and x plus 5. There, we have factored it. But what if they don't tell you any of the factors? Well, then we have to use the rational zero theorem. Then, if we have a polynomial function, the rational zeros, rational means fraction, zeros that can be written as fractions, includes whole numbers, will be in the form of p divided by q, where p is a factor of the constant term, and q is the factor of the leading coefficient. What this does is, if we aren't given any factors, you could choose anything. This narrows down the choices to something manageable. So how does this rational zero theorem work? All right, to find all the rational zeros of a function, list all the factors of the constant term, the p's, and all the factors leading coefficients, the q's. List all possible values of a p divided by a q. Make sure you have both positives and negatives. Determine which of those are actually zeros by using synthetic division. So you kind of pick one, guess one, and divide. See if the remainder is a zero. Remember, solving by graphing, though, the x-intercepts were the solutions. So one thing you could do is you could graph it on a graphing calculator. And you could choose your possible zero by looking for the x-intercepts and making sure those x-intercepts are on your list of the possible rational zeros. After your first zero is found, use the depressed polynomial to find the next zero. And then you repeat using the depressed polynomial until it is a quadratic. So you'll keep dividing until you get a quadratic and then you factor or use quadratic formula to find the last two zeros. Some students don't want to do all this process. They just want to look at the calculator and say, oh, the x-intercepts. However, that will not get you the imaginary zeros, the imaginary numbers that are solutions. This method does give you the imaginary solutions. All right, so let's list all the possible rational zeros of this. Well, we have the p's and the q's. The p's are factors of the constant term, so 9. What times what makes 9? Well, 1 and 9, or 3 times 3. We put pluses and minuses because it could be minus 1 times minus 9, or negative 3 times negative 3. Q's are factors of the leading coefficients, so that's 2. So to get 2 is 1 times 2, and again, pluses and minuses. So the possible rational zeros are P's divided by Q's, so I could have 1 over 1, or 1 over 2. Could have 3 over 1, or 3 over 2. Could have 9 over 1, or 9 over 2. There you are. Those are possibilities. Those are not all zeros, but they are possibilities. It's having 12 choices, 6 of them, pluses and minuses, is far smaller than infinite number of numbers. Right, find all the zeros of this function. Now, I'm not giving any factors, so we're going to take and do p's and q's. So, p's are factors of the 20, which would be 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. 
Q's are factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. So the P's over Q's happen to be the same as the P's. By the way, if you're writing out this list and you end up with the same P divided by Q twice, so maybe you had 3 over 1 and 6 over 2, which both give you 3, just write it once. All right, now we're going to do synthetic division. Now, uh, which of these 12 choices do you want to use? Well, usually they're going to be at the smaller end of the spectrum. But to help, we could use a graphing calculator. So go home, pick grapher. Let's put in a new expression. So it's x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 20. All right, looking at my graph, it looks like I have an x-intercept at the negative 2. So we'll use negative 2. All right, the coefficients are 1, negative 4, negative 2, and 20. That was from up here. Bring down and multiply, add and multiply, add and multiply and add and look at that you got a zero it was x cubed we divided by x now it's x squared it's the depressed polynomial is quadratic so we can probably just factor that or use the quadratic formula let's try factoring times x to get 10 it's maybe 2 or negative 2 and negative 5, which adds to make negative 7. But I have 6 in the middle. Well, we could try 1 and 10. It gives me negative 11. Not factorable. All right, so if it's not factorable, let's use the quadratic formula. All right, so... A is 1, B is negative 6, C is 10, so negative and negative 6, negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10, 2 times 1, that'll be 6, negative 6 squared is 36, and 4 times 10 is 40. 36 minus 40 is negative 4. Ah, that's why we couldn't factor it. It's imaginary. Square root of negative 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and the negative makes i. Split that into two separate fractions. So just 3 plus and minus 1i. So what are the zeros? Well, it's the negative 2 that we started with. 3 plus i and 3 minus i. Yes, you need to have the imaginary zeros for the answers also. If you just looked at your graph and you just found the x-intercepts, you would have only gotten the negative 2. That's why you have to do the synthetic division to get the imaginary zeros.